Earlier this year, I interviewed for senior software engineering roles at companies like Meta, OpenAI, Pinterest, Databricks, and Netflix, and many more. I learned a lot throughout the process, what worked, what didn't work, and how different each company's interview process is from one another. In the first of this video series, I'll take you through my journey interviewing at OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. I'm going to tell you exactly how I started, how I prepared, what the process was like, and what ultimately happened. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google and at other big tech companies like Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. If you're trying to break into the top AI companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, or any leading AI research organization, this video will show you the exact approach I used. From getting noticed by recruiters to navigating their unique interview process, I'll break down each round so you know what to expect. By the end of this video, you'll know the format that OpenAI structures their interviews, what compensation to expect, and most importantly, how to prepare for each specific round. Let's dive in. Before you go down the interview loop, think about if the company you're interviewing for is the one that you'll actually want to work at. I didn't just consider the prestige or the comp at OpenAI. I spent a couple of weeks researching OpenAI's recent projects, reading their published papers, and understanding their charter, which emphasizes building AGI that benefits all of humanity. This wasn't just frivolous homework, it genuinely helped me understand if I'd be a good fit. Here is OpenAI's charter's main tenets. First, AGI focus. Everything they do should move humanity closer to safe, beneficial AGI. They also want intense and scrappy. People at OpenAI work hard, stay practical, and do whatever works, even the unglamorous stuff. Next, scale is magic. They prioritize big models, big systems, and big ambitions. Also, make something people love. Their tech should genuinely improve lives. And finally, team spirit. OpenAI is open, so no silos, no not my problem mindset. Everyone works toward the same mission. Next, let's talk about the interview process. Getting an interview at OpenAI is notoriously difficult. They receive thousands of applications for every position, and their acceptance rate is lower than most Ivy League schools. Here's what worked for me. So I first updated my LinkedIn to open to work for recruiters, something that I never done before in my life because it felt vulnerable and I didn't know if a recruiter in my previous job might happen upon my profile and know that I was looking elsewhere. I also updated my LinkedIn, added more detail what I'd done at Google and my other previous roles, and I think this made all the difference. One of OpenAI's hiring managers actually reached out directly via LinkedIn to me and put me in contact with the recruiter. I hadn't even submitted my application than yet. Another thing in retrospect, even though it ended up working out for me, I definitely should have asked for a referral. I happen to already know a couple people at OpenAI, but to be honest, I had felt pretty self-conscious about asking them to vouch for me. Don't make my mistake, definitely utilize the network that you already have. When the recruiter reached out to me, we had a call where she outlined a comprehensive process that spans a couple of weeks. OpenAI moves quite fast, which was a welcome change from some companies I interviewed for where rounds took a lot longer. So first you have the initial recruiter screen, which is about 30 minutes. Next, you have a technical phone screen, which is 60 minutes, and a system architecture interview, which is 60 minutes. If you pass those initial rounds, then you have your virtual onsite. That consists of a coding interview, 60 minutes, a technical deep dive presentation round, 45 minutes, a cross-functional partnership interview, 45 minutes, and finally, a hiring manager interview, 45 minutes. What struck me was the emphasis on collaboration and communication skills. Half of the interviews were not about technical assessments, but rather focused on how you work with others and explain complex concepts. Before diving into the specifics of each round, let's talk numbers. OpenAI's compensation for a senior software engineer is an average of 569,000 total comp. The breakdown typically looks something like this. Base salary is 265k ish, equity is 303k ish, and this is where it gets interesting. As a private company, OpenAI does not offer stock, but rather the PPU or profit participation units that could be extremely valuable if they continue growing as OpenAI has done and could multiply a lot more than publicly traded stocks. OpenAI also has comprehensive benefits like health insurance, unlimited PTO, and learning stipends. But honestly, I would say that most people joined OpenAI for the mission, not just the money. Are you saying that they're stupid? But in terms of money, OpenAI also gave $1.5 million in bonuses to every technical member of staff earlier this year. Now that we've gotten the money talk out of the way, I'm going to break down the interview process round by round. First, we had the initial recruiter screen. This was straightforward. I discussed my background, my motivation for wanting to join OpenAI specifically, and we discussed logistics. The recruiter was clearly keeping in mind cultural fit and genuine interest in things like AI safety and beneficial AGI. We then settled on some dates for the next rounds. The next rounds were a technical phone screen and a system design round. In the technical phone screen, I had a standard LeetCode style coding challenge. I got a LeetCode hard. 
OpenAI prefers that you use Python for their coding challenges, but you're allowed to use other languages if you must. The evaluation is pretty standard. You'll be based on the completeness and correctness of your solution, as well as any progress you make throughout the question. My interviewer told me in the beginning of the interview that the question he was going to ask me had more parts than anyone could feasibly finish in the allocated time, and he just wanted to see how far I got. As for the system design round, this was a pretty standard system architecture question. Beforehand, be sure to brush up on your system design concept fundamentals and practice drawing your diagrams on a virtual whiteboard. And be prepared to discuss design decisions and trade-offs. The core concepts you should know include the abilities. So for example, scalability, availability, and reliability, and cap theorem. You should also know networking, security, and performance best practices, as well as web cloud architecture and distributed system design. And for me, after the feedback from the technical phone screen rounds and system design rounds returned positive, I was then scheduled for my on-site. The first round I got on the on-site was a technical deep dive. This is an interview where you'll be walking the interviewer through a system that you built at a previous company. It's where companies evaluate how you think in terms of systems, not just if you can code a Leco style problem, and also if you've completed projects that are of the caliber of the level that you're interviewing for. Unlike coding rounds that test problem solving speed, this one focuses on real engineering judgment. For example, how you design systems, make trade-offs, and debug at scale. You'll need to answer questions like, what were the hardest technical challenges? Or why did you decide to go with X stack instead of Y? Also, I would recommend making slides to include system diagrams. The interviewer wants to see if you understand your own system end to end, from API design and data modeling to caching and failure recovery, and whether you can explain the whole system clearly and logically. To prepare, choose one or two impactful projects where you own meaningful technical decisions. For each, outline the context, what problem you solved, the architecture, what you built and why, trade-offs, what you optimize for, and impact, what measurable outcome you had. Then practice walking through your entire system out loud. Have a friend listen to you and ask questions. Next, let's talk about the cross-functional interview. In this interview, they're testing how well you collaborate beyond just writing code. It's less about whether you can build the API and more about how you communicate, prioritize, and work with people that aren't engineers. For example, product managers, designers, or data scientists. The interviewer wants to see if you can explain technical concepts clearly, negotiate trade-offs, and find solutions that balance technical quality with business impact. The best way to ace this round is to treat it like a story about teamwork. Walk through a real example where you had to align multiple teams, what the goal was, what challenges came up, and how you helped move things forward. Show that you can listen, adapt, and make decisions that consider everyone's perspective. Remember, they're not looking for the smartest person in the room. They're looking for someone who can turn complexity into collaboration. Next came the hiring manager round. This consisted of some pretty standard behavioral questions with some more AI-heavy emphasis. Be sure to study the OpenAI charter and know that OpenAI is a very fast-paced environment where people are very passionate about their work and might pull very long hours. And finally, I had another coding round at the virtual onsite. This was front-end specific because I was interviewing for a front-end role. So if you're in the same boat, be sure to study React or Angular or some other front-end framework. You'll be asked to code up a component from scratch. Here is exactly how I prepare for all these interviews, and this approach will work for any top AI company. First, focus on technical foundations for two weeks. Review basic ML concepts like transformers, architectures, attention mechanisms, and distributed training. Also study recent papers from companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and DeepMind. Next, focus on coding practice for three weeks. Do a lot of LeetCode, for example, LeetCode 75 or Nico 150. Also build small products Projects using OpenAI's APIs to understand their products. Next, do system design for two weeks. I crammed grokking the modern system design interview. You should also study ML-specific system design, training pipelines, model serving, and data processing. And finally, last but not least, we have the behavioral rounds. Practice explaining technical concepts to non-technical friends and prepare stories demonstrating collaboration, innovation, and handling ambiguity. So in conclusion, going through the interview process at OpenAI taught me a lot about what the cutting edge AI companies seek. If you're targeting OpenAI, Anthropic, or other similar companies, start playing around with AI side projects now and understand the technology deeply, not just superficially. And most importantly, think through your own opinions about AI's impact on society. If this helped you understand the OpenAI interview process, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe for more perspectives on interviewing with top tech companies. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next one.